You have arrived at your destination. Welcome to the Damn Good Podcast! Starring Damage Goods! And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a very special Halloween edition of the Damn Good Podcast. I am your host, Stefan Gearhart. I am one of your other hosts, Parker Bowles. And I am also one of your hosts, Rocky Williams. And guys, we have a very, very special show for our listeners out there in listener land. How special is it? Well, it's so special that we're not going to do our normal podcast because we're going to present to you today a very cool thing that hopefully no one else is doing in the DNN. Uh, But we are doing uh, an old-timey radio play, an old horror one uh, specifically for Halloween. We have a script here. We're going to do all the voices, all the sound effects, and just have a damn good time. I see what you did there. Yeah, D-A-M. <laughs> time, I see it. Yep, but we've got an amazing script, guys. This comes from 1946 <clears throat> uh, from a show called The Strange Dr. Weird. And uh, this is a uh, show called Journey into the Unknown. Uh, and this show, Strange Dr. Weird, scared the pants out of people in the 40s and the 50s and the 30s and all that jazz. So, Rocky, don't get scared. Scared the pants out of them? Yeah. yeah. So, so people just, had pants in them? They well, yeah. shitting in them, dude. <laughs> that, that's, what it, that's what it was back then. You didn't wear pants. You, like, in, you know, sucked them in, I guess. I Is that through your body hole? <laughs> yeah, through your body hole. <laughs> e- Rocky just made a body hole sound effect. Um, but I do want to say, uh, as well, since it is October... Um, We are reaching the year anniversary of our good friend Ryan Kemp passing on, and I wanted to go ahead and dedicate this show to him. He loved stuff like this. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I wanted to dedicate this to him. Kemp Kemp pretty much loved everything, I feel like. Yeah, pretty much anything entertainment Uh, in any way, shape, or form. I don't know. Did you ever see him drink Tab? No, he was Mm. not a Tab drinker, nor did I see him listening to Taylor Swift. That's true. But here's the thing about Kemp is even if he listened to Taylor Swift... And you were like, Kemp, what'd you think about that? He'd still find something nice to say about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. He'd be like, she's pretty. I, I think the only thing I ever heard him talk shit about was the new, the idea of the new Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> like, I mean, that's the truth. That's literally, I'm cur- literally. I'm curious what he would have thought. But oh well. Yeah. We'll never know. Now that he's immortalized in it. Yes, pretty much. that he is. Uh, so if you guys are ready, we're going to get moving here with, once again, the name of the show that we've got our script from is The Strange Doctor Weird, and the episode is titled Journey into the Unknown. It originally premiered November 21st, 1944. Jive Turkey presents The Strange Dr. Weird Good evening Come in, won't you? You seem a bit nervous Perhaps it would calm you a little If I were to read to you From the secret journal of Professor Drake. It's a fascinating tale, and I call it Journey into the Unknown. There are extremely interesting entries in Professor Drake's journal, particularly those beginning with the entry made October 1st, which reads, Today my son, Paul, has reached the final stages in the preparation of his serum number 17. After two years of intensive work and 16 failures, he believes that he's at last succeeded. But just think of it, Paul! Before you took the serum, you could only lift 200 pounds, and now you can lift 400! Why, your strength has doubled. 
Yes, with the added strength my serum will give man, he will be able to resist diseases that he succumbs to now. His lifespan will be lengthened by 20 or 30 years, perhaps even... I'll answer it, Paul. Oh, it's you, Julia. Yes, I want to see Paul. Well, you can't, Julia. He's right in the midst of an experiment. But I haven't seen or heard from him in two weeks. After all, I am his fiance. But Julia, he can't be disturbed. He's in... Oh, hello, darling. Why, Julia? <clears throat> oh, Paul, you, you squeezed me so tightly. I'm sorry, my dear. I'm afraid I don't know my own strength. Oh, that's all right, Paul. What kind of experiment is it you're working on now? Darling, I can't reveal anything yet, not even to you. But when my work is done, you'll be the first one to hear about it. Here's the entry for October 7th. Serum number 17 is effective beyond Paul's wildest hopes. Just think of it, Paul. Today you were able to lick up 600 pounds with ease. Yes. Why? Why are you staring at yourself in the mirror so... Father, do you notice any change in the shape of my head? Why, no, Paul. I, and I'd certainly notice a change if there was one. Yes, of course. It must be my imagination. On October 8th, he wrote... This morning, when I entered the laboratory, I found Paul fast asleep at his desk. I woke him. Paul, wake up. Huh? You should have gone to bed when I... <coughs> Paul! No, it can't be! What? What is it, Father? What's wrong? Your face! My face! Quick! Hand me that mirror! Oh, yes. Here. Yeah. No! No! I was right. Look at me, Father. My face has become broad. The features flattened. The cheekbones prominent. And notice how thick the hair on my body has become. I've reverted to the Neanderthal man. Neanderthal man. But Paul, he existed 50,000 years ago. Yes, I know. At the swift pace I'm going backwards, it may only be a week, a few days before I revert to an ape completely. Paul, what are we going to do? There's only one way I can save myself. I must find a neutralizer. That will stop the serum from changing me into an ape. Before it's too late. In his entry for October 10th, he wrote, Paul has been working 48 hours without rest, and so far has been unsuccessful in finding a neutralizer. This morning, when I entered the laboratory, I could see that he is looking more and more like an ape every day. Paul, you just can't go on this way. You've got to get some rest. I can't rest. Every minute is precious. I, I lost four hours last night. You lost four hours. I, I don't understand. While I was working here last night, I glanced at the clock to find it was just three o'clock. Then, the next thing I remember was finding myself in the hall, and the clock was just striking seven. I can't remember those four hours. Where I was, what I was doing. In those four hours, I lost my ability to think as a man. My mind became that of an ape. During those four hours, I, I, I actually was an ape!
return to the story of the terrible danger threatening this young scientist in just a moment. Meanwhile, a breathing spell, a word from Dr. Weird. Yes. <laughs> yes. A breathing spell. Something pleasant to think upon. And what subject would be more appropriate at this time of year than a good canned turkey from Jive Turkey? <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. An average home in America, in an average home kitchen, sees an average homemaker making lunch for her son. Jimmy, lunch is ready. Swell! I'm starving. What did you make? An ice-cold glass of cow's milk, an apple, and a turkey sandwich. Oh, gee, Mom. You know I hate turkey. But don't worry, son. This isn't just any turkey. This is jive turkey. I promise you won't even know it's turkey. Just try it. I dare you. Oh, gosh. I never back down from a dare. Okay, here goes. Gee, golly, that's turkey. <laughs> I told you. I'd like some more. <laughs> that's right. Even picky kids agree that dry turkey is a turkey for them. Now, let's return to Dr. Weird and his tale, Journey into the Unknown. The entry for... October 11th, in Professor Drake's journal, reads as follows. The changes in Paul's appearance continue. His body is now completely covered with a heavy growth of hair, and his skin is rapidly turning to a deep brown and becoming coarse and calloused. <laughs> his arms have lengthened almost five inches, and he walks more and more in a stooped manner, with hands almost touching the floor. As yet, no change in voice has been noted. On October 12th, he wrote, Last night, Paul suddenly dropped a test tube and snarled at me. In that moment, he was completely an ape. The entry for October 13th reads, Last night when I came into the laboratory, I found a window open and Paul was gone. I immediately rushed out into the night to find him. A few blocks away on the university campus, I saw police gathered around the body of a girl who had just been murdered. Every bone in her body had been crushed. A few hours later, Paul returned to this house. He could recall nothing of what had happened or where he'd been. To prevent another accident from occurring, today I had steel bars placed over Paul's bedroom windows. Oh, it's you, Julia. Good evening, Mr. Drake. I want to see Paul. Now, I'm sorry, Julia, but Paul can't be disturbed. He's asleep in his room. You've been putting me off for days, but this time I'm going to see him. Julia, come back! You can't see him now! The light switch. Oh, here it is. Julia, you shouldn't have... Why, he... He isn't here. His room's empty. He... He isn't here. Why were those bars put over Paul's windows? It, it, it's all part of the experiment, Julia. Why, this window over here? It's as though someone bent the bars apart to escape, but no man could have bent bars as strong as these. <gasps> 
That ape! Uh, what ape, Julia? The one that the police believe crushed the poor girl to death last night. Now, really, Julia, do you think for a moment that we had... You were using an ape in the experiment. This room was his cage. And now he's escaped. Julia, you're wrong, I I assure you. Paul, Paul's out looking for that ape, isn't he? And the ape's a killer. Please, Julia, I'm going to get the police. It's Friday day after tomorrow, and now a special message from the police headquarters. 20 minutes ago, an unidentified girl was found crushed to death. It is believed that she was killed by the ape that met at Betty Ryan late last night. All residents are warned to get off the streets. Father, I heard what the announcer said. I killed that girl tonight, didn't I? And the one last night, too. I'm a murderer. Paul, listen to me. The police are looking for everywhere for you. We haven't a moment to lose the neutralizer we were working on last night. It should be ready by now, shouldn't it? Yes. And this time I'm certain it will work. You must take an injection before it's too late. And you revert forever to an ape. Open up in there. That's the police. Quick, father, the neutralizer before it's too late. I have to fill this hypodermic, Paul, before I can give you the injection. All right, man. Break down the door. Uh, hurry, Father, hurry! I am... It's too late! There he goes, man. Out the window! Paul! Paul, come back! Mike, please, flash a warning to every patrol car. Issue Tommy guns to all the men. The orders are, shoot to kill. All right, men, spread out. We've got the ape cornered now. Please, Chief. You've got to listen to me. If you only let me inject this neutralizer into him, there won't be any need for all this. Oh, don't listen to him, Chief. That ape's a killer. Yeah, we're going to put an end to that ape once and for all. No, no, you can't. You don't understand. It isn't an ape. It's my son, Professor Drake. (laughs) Your son. I know an ape when I see one. Yes, I know. But it's my son changed into an ape. This neutralizer will bring him back to normal. You must be crazy. All right, Mike, let him have it. No, no, no. I won't let you. I'm coming, Paul. I'm coming. Mr. Drake, Mr. Drake, come back here. Come back here, do you hear? Hold your fire, Mike. Hold your fire. Here I am, Paul. Paul, it's your father. I have the neutralizer. Come away from that ape, Mr. Drake. (laughs) Paul, I have the injection. Give me your arm. (laughs) Paul, no, no, no. No. Oh, he's going to kill him. (laughs) All right, Mike, he's dropped the old man's body now. Let him have it. My chest! Father, where am I? What's happened? was a great pity about poor Professor Drake, wasn't it? He was so young. (laughs) What am I going to do with his journal? I thought I might carry on with his experiments. But I would need someone to assist me as a sort of human guinea pig. Perhaps you would like to volunteer. (laughs) Oh, no. 
You have to go. Too bad. Perhaps you'll drop in on me again soon. I'm always home. Just look for the house on the other side of the cemetery. The house <laughs> of Dr. Weird. <laughs> Join us again next week at the same time for another visit with the strange Dr. Weird. The Strange Dr. Weird, directed by Jock McGregor, is presented by the makers of Jive Turkeys. The turkey that makes you say, oh brother, that's turkey. <laughs> Woo. All right. That's good. So credits, let's give credit where credit is due. Yeah, let's do that. Credits. All right. uh, Rocky Williams. Uh, Rocky Williams, you played the announcer for the show as well as the radio announcer and Paul's father. Kudos to you. Bravo to you, Rocky. Father, bravo, father. bravo. Excellent. Yeah. Parker, you. Yes. you, sir, played the very difficult and endearing role of Julia Yes. As well as Paul. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I played my own lover. Yes, you I, did. I, if you could see me now, you could see that I broke a sweat in the process. You did. You did. And <laughs> then I played uh, the uh, strange Dr. Weird, so not really stretching. Uh, very, very strange. Yeah, very strange. Yeah. As well as the police chief. Don't forget about the police chief. Oh, of course, chief. Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. Bravo. Uh, bravo, Stefan. All sound effects provided by Mr. Rocky Williams. Uh, kudos yeah, to you, our nice. editing chief. <laughs> Uh, we want to thank you guys very much for listening to this very special episode of the Damn Good Podcast. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, guys. Uh, where can they find us uh, if they want to know more about our improv comedy troupe that we have in Louisville, Kentucky? You can find us online at damngoodnation.com. That's D-A-M goodnation.com. And from there, you can link to all of our social media. We're on Facebook at Damage Goods Improv. We're on Twitter at Damn Good Improv. Uh, we're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on pretty much everywhere we could possibly be. And uh, you can find our next show in Louisville, Rocky. Uh, you'll find that at the Bardstown, uh, which is basically headquarters for damaged goods. You can call it the Hall of Improv Justice. <laughs> 1801 Bardstown Road. You're going to see us uh, perform our Halloween special October 15th. This is a Saturday at 10 o'clock. So Ooh. it's for the adults. <laughs> For Especially, the and we'll be in a the theater, so we're going to have some special things going on, right. as we always do every Halloween. Right, and more than likely, uh, they they will also be catching our November show, which is not soon after, the, or which is very soon after that, yeah. November fifth yeah. at yeah. seven thirty p.m. That's going to be pretty awesome too at the Bardstown. But please make it to our Halloween show. That one is always a special show. We have all kinds of special surprises. Uh, if you want to dress up, please do. We've already been told uh, a few people are already dressing up that I've heard. So. Yeah. It's going to be really, really And really some people good. are ugly enough they don't have to dress up. Right, like Brian Kinnison. Yep. Or like, some people are just cross-dressing. Like, oh. cro yeah, yeah, like yeah. like dressing while they cross the street, right? Yep. No, that, that just means that they're cursing while they are changing clothes. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when uh, you find out those jeans don't fit anymore. <laughs> 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 That's right. We're also excited to announce that we're heading to the Grand Rapids Improv Festival yes. in October. I'm yeah. super stoked about that. We'd love those guys up there, even though we haven't been up there yet. But we've met a couple of them, and they're yes. super groovy. They're great people, uh, and that's Grand Rapids, Michigan. So if you're in that area, come and see us. And you know who else is cool? Who? The DNN, the that's Destination right. Nation Network, who we are gladly and proudly a part of. Uh, there are some other great podcasts that you can check out. Uh, Powerbomb. With Brian Kennison, the real ugly dude that we were just talking about. Yep. Uh, he has a fantastic podcast. Kill Screen Cinema is really jamming right now. Another podcast. And as always, you know, check out Girl Gone Geek. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, they're the, all pretty cool. The Nicole is one hell of a host. And she's been getting some cool people on there. Yeah, she does pretty good with that. Though she did just have Brian Kennison on there, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us today, and we'll see you next fart. Ah! Thank you for listening, DNN.